50 minutes of tutorial videos for 1,000 XP. Yeah. And then the game is basically just the multiplayer with bots, mm. with some cutscenes. But uh, when you have a high, like, I mean, this is a high-level multiplayer experience. You have, uh, you have kill zones... Uh, evolving objectives. You have uh, Team Fortress Two or Team Fortress's kind of a deep class system. And mm-hmm. when you have a deep class system as opposed to a shallow class system, there's ridiculous amounts of balancing and a, a ridiculous amounts of knowing your role. You get thrown into this game. You're you're getting thrown to the wolves. There's no and there is no single player real train up because even the single player is a, a confusing mess even after you watch the tutorials. So I think it, it there's this kind of high bar to entry. And I know there's a lot of uh, PC guys who are more down with the game. Mm-hmm. But it's still kind of a mess. I mean, I, I play games all the time. I was kind of shocked at how ridiculous. And you know, I'm a the Demon Souls guy. I like ridiculously <laughs> shocked at like how hard it was to kind of get into this game. Now, do you think with all the other shooters on the market, is there really any reason to buy this? It seems to me you should just get the orange box, right? To that specifically, I will say that the Team Fortress 2 experience on the consoles is vastly inferior to what you'd get on the PC. Right. No Ma- hats? Mainly because, yeah, no hats. Actually, yeah. that's better. <laughs> it's not even the same game. <laughs> it's yeah, not the same Valve. game anymore. Uh, actually, Valve has been very, very, very good over the years to support Team Fortress 2 post-launch with a number of DLC, uh, free content, and also actual... Um, mechanical upgrades to the game where you would experience you know new loadouts new uh systems in in the game but you don't get that in the orange box as to whether or not uh, there would be an audience for brink i think it will have its fair share of supporters um obviously i don't see it going head to head with a game like black ops anytime soon but certainly one of the reasons why i was drawn to it i'm sure many other people would find reasons to play it is because it one like ryan mentioned it has a very uh deep and um, precise kind of emphasis on class-based combat, which is something that a lot of console shooters are starting to adapt now. But I feel like Brink is one of the only games where it has it uh, has it as a primary focus from the outset. Um, like Killzone kind of does its cool Killzone's things is with the shallow. classes. Yeah, it's but it's a shallow class. It, it's it's not nearly to the same depths and kind of strategic. Uh, complexity as something you'd see. Yeah, exactly. Teamwork is a huge focal point of this game, which is I think is really good and unique. That's the good part and the bad part, though, right? Because you have to have, because it is so based on teamwork, you Mm -hmm. have to make sure that you're playing with a group of people who are down with the plan. Otherwise, it turns into a complete disaster. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure your experiences on Xbox Live or PSN are a lot like mine. If you're not playing with friends, getting people to actually coordinate can be a real pain in the ass. Exactly. It's not the kind of game like, uh, again, Call of Duty or Halo, where you could just as easily play Lone Wolf and still do pretty well, all while contributing to the team. There is a huge emphasis on teamwork, which makes this game a, a little divisive because, uh, you know, unless you have friends or people that you can, uh, like, hook up with online to form, like, a little fire team and coordinate then it might be a little difficult. But at the same time, um, it, I think it does a decent job of uh, trying to come up with um, impromptu organization because there is a little objective wheel when you hit 